Welcome everyone. This was requested multiple times by one person. <laughs> like they really wanted me to make a video about this. And I love requests and I do get to them all eventually. So here it is. I'm actually very excited to make this video because it is the good, the bad, and the ugly. While being a sock analyst is great and rewarding, there's also the bad and the ugly. So without further ado, let's get started. The good. Sock analysts are in high demand. And not only that, but it's growing. Year over year, it's growing as organizations start to learn, oh, if we don't take security seriously, we're going to lose a lot of money. So as organizations take security in general seriously, we're gonna need more SOC analysts. And I get messages almost daily for people reaching out, hey, we have an open role for this SOC analyst position. Are you available? And typically it's contract work, but regardless, SOC analysts are in high demand. The next good is we are constantly learning. Being a SOC analyst is evolving daily. I mean, there are new threats that are out multiple times a day that to be the best SOC analyst we're keeping up with. And even outside of threats like malware, we also are at the forefront to learn about new threats in general, like vulnerabilities on softwares and drivers. And this is very rewarding. I mean, I f believe all normal functioning people enjoy learning. And I say normal functioning because there was a span of time in my life where I was just lazy and I didn't care to learn new things. But if we're out of that, we, we want to learn, right? If you are not growing, you're decaying. Now, the final good I want to speak about is the salary and the benefits. So the job I came from before becoming a SOC analyst, I was making like half of the money. And to pivot into become a SOC analyst, I just put in six months of hard work. I have no degree. I just put in six months of hard work. I also have a roadmap of how I did that. And I'll put that somewhere over here. The link that is. And the salary is, is great. I mean, I'm making double what I was making. And the benefits are great as well. I'll actually talk about the the scheduling for being a SOC analyst. That's very interesting. So the current schedule I have is I work two days a week and then the next week I work five days a week. And then that happens over and over again. Each shift is 10 hours long. Now, when I was interviewing, I also interviewed at an organization where their schedule was that they work seven days a week and then they're off seven days the next week. Um, this is a great segue to the bad. <laughs> so here we go. The bad. Alert fatigue. What is alert fatigue? Okay, so as a SOC analyst, you have a queue and you are working these queues. Okay, you have your alerts in the queue. You pick up an alert, you investigate it, you escalate it if need be, or you remediate it yourself. So this is an all day thing. You pick up, investigate it, do what you need to, move to the next one, and the next, and the next, and the next, and the next, all day, every day. Now, if you are a person that cannot help but give it your all, like whatever I do, I give it my all, okay? If you're a person like that, you need to learn to tone it down. I was at a point where I had the highest number of alerts worked in the whole organization. And this was for the span of like six months. Needless to say, I was exhausted. And we need to learn to slow it down, maybe be a bit more thorough on the investigation if you can, and include some small details. But that is the first bad, alert fatigue. There is a lot to do and you're always doing it. Now the second bad, and this is kind of going off of the third good, which was uh, the scheduling that I had included there. To be a SOC analyst, there is 24-7 monitoring. So if you are not 
on the night shift indefinitely, you will definitely rotate into it at some point and have to be on the night shift for you know three months or more or less, depending on your organization. Now, that might not be a negative to some people, but I know most people want a solid, consistent schedule. And as a stock analyst, from what I've seen, you do not get that. Of course, I'm sure there are specific positions where you are constantly nine to five or constantly five to however, so on and so forth. But from what I've seen, that is not the case. Now, the third bad, which this is not a bad for me, but for a lot of people, I can definitely see it. That is the limit to human interaction. Now, if you are working remotely as a SOC analyst, obviously you're at home. So you're only going to be limited to where you are. Uh, a way around this would be to work at uh, like a library and just use their Wi-Fi or your own hotspot, which is preferred. And even if you are in the SOC, you are not going to be really conversing with too many people. Now, you can, of course, speak with your coworkers, and we do do that a lot. And sometimes it's too much for me. And I'm like, hey, leave me alone. <laughs> but for the most part, it's really just you investigating and you are in your own zone so now we're going to get to the ugly and the first one i want to bring up the ugly is as a sock analyst that's really your projection so in order to move into any other place in security unless you're doing management you need to really be learning a lot outside of the job and i know that that was a pro at first but there's so much to learn that it's kind of like analysis paralysis right where there's so much to learn that you're like where do i start or what should i prioritize right and for example if you're trying to transition into a penetration tester role you are going to have a hard time if you were just a sock analyst you will need to be studying for something like the oscp in your free time and that's incredibly demanding. So the transitioning from a SOC analyst to other positions in the security realm could be a bit ugly. A second ugly, which is something I've been thinking about a lot, is the potential for AI to take your job. Now, this is something that is happening for a lot of us. I mean, anybody that's watching this, there's a high potential. If you do not think there's a high potential for any and every job, you do not know enough about AI. It's, 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 AI is very impressive, okay? And it's only increasing daily. Now, in the same vein, there will always need to be someone analyzing technologies, right? So there would eventually be a SOC analyst for AI. That's the thought process. But... A self-regulated SOC AI bot, that doesn't seem too far away to me because I am already kind of programming something to do my job for me. And it's incredibly accurate. And that's the thing too is humans have emotions and their emotions can sway their investigation. The robot doesn't. Now there's pros and cons to this. We can get into that. That's a whole other video, but that's the second ugly. And the third ugly, there is a high demand for SOC analysts. Now, what's ugly is most of it is for skilled SOC analysts. And by that, I mean SOC analysts with experience, okay? The job market sees experience as skilled. I don't make the rules. I'm just in this conglomerate with you. And that's incredibly frustrating as well as disheartening, right? We see these posts, SOC analysts, so many job openings, but it's like, oh, have 20 years of experience with a CISP. And if you don't know, a CISP is a security defensive slash management certification that you can only get um, if you have five years of experience in the security realm and then you need a person that has a CISP to vouch for you. And there's a few other requirements, but it, it's just like, really, do you need a CISP to be a SOC analyst? No, that's ridiculous, Tr truly. But that's, that's ugly. 
right? They want all this experience and these certifications, which to be honest with you, I don't see why a person that has two years of experience can't do any other SOC analyst job. You learn so much in two years, it's insane. So much in one year even, but two years, yeah. So this has been the good, the bad, and the ugly for being a SOC analyst. While it's an incredibly rewarding career, there are some drawbacks just like anything else, right? If you truly feel interested in this field, do it. Come and do it. If 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 the bads and the uglies are not that bad to you, let's let's go, right? If the good outweighs the bad, why not? And this concludes the video. Subscribe for more cybersecurity and thank you for watching.